Morning, John. Well, good morning, kids. It is July 24th already. This is the Collaboration Cafe. And Elena, thank you so much for joining us for the first time. It, we do this every Monday morning. We kick around an idea to uh, help you know our business, help each other grow in our areas and whatever we can do. And you gotta, you got some very um, talented people on this call every week. And again, just trying to help each other grow their business. Um, I want to share something with you this morning before we start. We're, we're going to talk about um, what you see out there and, and how you position your properties for photography, videography, et cetera, because I think it's important. You know, that's the first thing that people are looking on at online. Um, I bought a home in 2010. I didn't want to buy a short sale, but I looked at this, at this property because the, the photos were just so good. It got me into the property, although I wanted to avoid a short sale. It worked out just fine. So the photos are key. But um, let me share this with you. You guys saw my post this morning. Um, and if you can see the screen that there's, um, you know, the potential of a realtor license plate coming out, which I thought was pretty interesting. And, um, you, know, for, you know, it's going to be a little bit more money than your normal license plate. But it also, you know, some of the funds here says it'll go to help. Um, where does it say here? affordable housing efforts down in here. And you know what? This is just another way of marketing. Um, so, but you've got to take it one step further because if people know you're a realtor because of this license plate, then how about you need to frame it with something like that, okay? So not only are they, um, you know, now that you're a realtor, but let's get moving and your phone number. Just a thought, okay? <laughs> Okay, so Love that. thank you, thank you, thank you. So good morning, everybody. I'm glad you're here. So let's, um, Jimmy, Jim's got a background, Jim Ong's got a background in professional photography. And um, I think we all can, you know, relate to when we see <laughs> pictures and videography online, video online, it's like, it can make or break a, sh um, you know, showings and getting people into the home. So Jim, why don't you just walk us through your mind as a photographer and um, and what are some of the things we should be doing, let's say, as a listing agent or suggestions to the seller? OK, so a little bit of a background. Um, I myself and I, uh, <laughs> Rachel and I, we started out as artists. We moved to New York uh, when we were early 20s, uh, started working in uh, New York City doing advertising. And I stumbled upon this uh, this business that calls a uh, set building. So we would, uh, a client will come in and have this vision about how to, you know, advertise a room or furniture that uh, these things don't exist. So I built the set and communicate the idea to these people. So they buy the furniture. So long story short, uh, end up landing clients like Ikea and, you know, Bloomingdale's and things like that. So I've done a ton of those kind of things before I discovered real estate. So when I started, uh, when we moved out of New York, I discovered real estate. And I also discovered that you can transform the properties in real simple ways where people do just like feel like they're at home. So for the first thing you need, you need to do, talk to your client, is like just clear out as much as they can all the personal stuff because then other people can't get into it. So as a photographic uh, perspective, you just want to photograph the space as clean as you can do it, you know? So Rachel usually sent in a designer to just kind of like, okay, let's get rid of all these baskets and all kitten pictures and all this stuff and a quick coat of paint. Um, it's not about just taking the picture, but it's about getting ready to take a picture. I mean, you can send the best photographer in, in you know, into a place and he will do an amazing picture, but it's still not going to attract your clients. So, you know, have a, a good uh, stager, somebody who who is friendly and, and nice. Just go in and talk to the talk to the, the client first, the homeowner. So it's not coming from you. It's coming from an expert, from, from a visual person. Um, then give them a consultation. Usually our stage are charged like anywhere from 50 to $80 or something like that for an hour. Come in and talk to them. And then 
we usually have some kind of uh, contractors or painter or cleaner that we recommend and they come in and we'll take them a day, a week or a month, however long it takes to get the house ready for photograph. As a, as a photograph, it's very simple. Just keep the camera straight and vertical because, you know, uh, that's how we see things straight. A lot of uh, people, you know, they just don't know and they tilt the camera and, and makes the furniture go like keystone shape. And we don't know it, but it just feel odd. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm, that's weird. Like like the, the picture behind me right now is like keystone. It looks weird. Um, those basic things. Yeah. Uh, as far as, you know, for photography, um, everybody now sit in front of the computer and they go home shopping. It's the, it's the new curve appeal, right? So uh, if you drive by a house and you like the way it looks, you might stop the car and you might come in if there's a there's a for sale sign. Well, you don't drive around. You you go around with your mouse, and then you see some of uh, the first photograph that capture your imagination or, or to capture your uh, attention. That's when you stop. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a good photo, um, they're not going to stop. Well, you know, the people who are going to stop are the the investors and flippers, and they're not going to give you the best price. Because they know they, it's actually one of the strategy for flippers to find property is to find the ugliest pictures online because people don't buy them. And now the, the, the buyers, the sellers desperate. That's nice. And then you can go in and, you know, tell, tell them how horrible the pictures are. And here it is, the, um, the seller is trying to save 300 bucks and they wind up losing thousands. So, you know, these are the things that we tell our clients, say, listen, you want to save 300 bucks or you want to make $10,000 more, you know, just kind of do you see, get a, get a professional photographer to come in the same reason, you know, we all get up in the morning, get dressed, comb our hair, brush our teeth and make ourselves pre presentable to go out and get the best shot. Um, that's what it's all about. Thank you. Jim. And then, yeah. yeah. You know what, I think one, interesting. one I think more thing, all... I just want to close it off. Uh, whoever you hired, make sure they don't go over the top and like put, you know, big eyelashes on your, on your house and put, you know, a lipstick on the pig and all kinds of stuff. And when the buyer shows up and it's not the same house and they get disappointed and they leave, they think, they think everything is a lie now. Yeah. They say, oh my God, I can't trust this, this realtor anymore because, you know, it's a scam like that. Anyway, that's, no, I, I no, I think I appreciate that, and I think we all can relate to that. I remember showing a home up in Spring Hill a couple of years ago, and it's a long ride for us from you know here in Pinellas, and the photos were just not a true depiction of the property. Um, you know, I this is my opinion, and like I'd like to share have everybody else's two cents here. But you know, if a home isn't worth taking photos of, or a room, for example, I'm not going to take it. Okay, you know, I'm going to take. You know, not every room has to be photographed. Not every closet should be photographed. I mean, you know, do you want to show a closet full of shoes? No, it's not necessary. I think we're going to paint the picture to put the house in the best light for our customer. And again, I bought my short sale because of the photos, and that's what's going to get people into the property. So, Karen, I know you've been doing this for a while with listings, et cetera. So any tips on prepping the home for photos when, you know, prior to a get listed? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and like for me, my motto is I don't care if it's a fifty thousand dollar home or a fifty million dollar home. You know, it, it, your consistency with your listings as a listing agent is extremely important in my opinion because this is your brand. Uh, you know that you're marketing. And I have a stager, uh, Donna Owens, and part of my strategy and my value proposition as a listing agent is you know Donna charges me a hundred bucks. Twenty bought twenty dollars for five hours, and I say to my my seller, "Look, I I'm going to give you Donna for five hours. You can she's going to come in here and get your home photograph ready, because it, like Jim, you know that's like one of the things Jim said. You have to get your your home photograph ready, and and that means clearing things out. Because I agree with Jim one hundred percent. You know, unfortunately, people don't want to see." 
your personal items, because then they're going to be walking through your home, you know, looking at your, your, you know, your medals or your honors or your degree that's, and then they're going to start thinking about, well, who is this person? And you don't want that. You want them to visualize their self themselves in, in your home. Um, so that's very important to me. And, and a lot of the times too, it helps the seller and it's not coming from you. It's coming from the professional. It's not coming from you, the listing agent, you know, but I always emphasize it and they, they appreciate the five hours and for a hundred bucks, it's, it's worth it to me. And they typically hire Donna to help them pack and move and things like that. So, um, yeah, extremely important. Michelle, why don't you unmute, please? And because um, I know you've got a background in this as well, with all your marketing, et cetera. Go ahead, dear. Yeah, absolutely. Decluttering is so important. Um, and also, um, you know, just taking away all of the little personal items, even your photos, I think is the, the, the family photos is really important. They don't really need to be in the pictures. I mean, I see it sometimes, it's not a big deal, but I, I think that it's a good idea to just tuck them away. But Karen, I thought what you said was really interesting. I didn't know that you could hire a stager for that. I thought that staging was just for putting in furniture in empty places and that kind of thing. And I didn't know that she would pack as well. So that's a really great tip for clients. Um, yeah, it definitely helps them um, because she specializes in working with hoarders, not that your clients are hoarders, but some of right. them probably are, and they just don't know it. Um, so she specializes in helping them with a mindset. This is what we're taking. This is what we're not taking. This is garbage. This is donations. And she, you know, compartmentalizes, um, you know, the, the process of selling your home uh, and getting it photo ready. Yeah, makes a huge difference, no doubt. Um, who else would like to chime in on this? Anybody? Christopher, I'll pick on you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Christopher. Um, I agree with it, what everybody said. Uh, I would add, you know, having that conversation with people, it's a personal thing. I mean, people's homes is one of the most, you know, personalized items and they're getting ready to sell it. What I do with my sellers is I tell them to change their mindset. As soon as they sign the listing agreement, it's no longer your home. It's going to be someone else's. And so you need to start looking at your home through their eyes, not your eyes. So the depersonalization, um, and it's an emotional thing for a lot of people. You know, they've lived in their home for 20 years and, and, and they have a lot of memories. And I was telling them, those memories are going to stay with you or they're going to stay here. And you're going to be physically leaving. They don't want your furniture. They don't want your pictures of your kids. They want to see the structure of the home. We want to highlight that through the photos, like Jim said, you know, and, you know, one of the biggest uh, obstacles that I've had, and I'm sure everybody that's sold properties uh, and been a listing agent is cleanliness. I mean, we all live in our homes. It's very difficult, especially if you have little kids to keep your house neat and tidy. And But no one wants to buy a house that is dirty. No one wants to buy a house that smells. Um, so those are tough conversations, but that's our job. And, you know, I always relate it to how much money they want to have. I've had homes. I had a home in downtown Dunedin. The amount of showings I got was unbelievable because Dunedin was just blowing up. This is prior to, to COVID. It was, I think, around 2016, 17, something like that. But it was unbelievably dirty. There were personal friends, uh, parents. It was really hard. It took nine months to sell the house. They had to do a lot of repairs and stuff like that. I learned a big, a, a lot of lessons on that listing um, about, you know, let's make sure that it's ready to go to market before you put it on the market. You know, sometimes as listing agents, we rush to, oh, we want to get on the market because we see the dollar signs. Of course, we want to get a sale. But um, I think Karen mentioned it, you know, spending that extra time and maybe extra money, both you and your client, make a world of difference. The house will sell faster everybody's going to be happier. Um, so I think really, really important to have those discussions with your clients prior to listing. Yeah. You know, and, and with the market shifted the way it is to now, you know, things on the market longer, et cetera. I mean, 
you know, unless you get that, the first impression is extremely important when people come into the home, because if not, you know, it's yeah. going to sit on the market, then it gets that stigmatization. And then people think, why, what's wrong? Why wasn't it, you know, and then to have to go back and retake pictures and, you know, and, you know, Karen's right. Having someone, uh, you know, a third party come in and, and sometimes we have to do that. We have to, they, our clients need to hear it from someone else. Um, don't ask me why they hired us as the professional, but they need to have somebody else that's not getting a paycheck per se, tell them that their house needs to be changed in some way. That's a great um, asset to use. So make sure, hey, if you need that to use Donna, get a hold of Karen, she can share that information. Um, Elena, since you're brand new here, why don't you unmute and um, tell us a little bit about yourself, first of all, and then share your two cents, please. Hi, well, my name is Elena Ivani. I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, Tampa area by choice. And Do you know Ed Escobar? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, wow. You're from Brooklyn? Go to Brooklyn College? Oh, uh, I've done around 25 years of training in Brooklyn <laughs> for real estate agents. You know, I've trained just about every company up there. What company oh, were nice. you with? In New York, I worked on Wall Street. I was on the American and New York Stock Exchange. Oh, I thought you saw real estate. Under a decade. <laughs> no, no. I'm in my fifth year. Oh, uh, I'm, sure you, I'm sure you've eaten at Peter Luger's, right? Absolutely. And I know it's completely overrated. I prefer the old homestead. <laughs> <laughs> Better steak, different vibe. Uh, so I'm in my fifth year of real estate down here in the Tampa area. I cover mainly Tampa East. So I live in Valrico. And I totally agree with what everyone's saying. And I do use the term, right? Once that listing agreement is signed, I no longer refer to the house as a home. It is a house or a property. And that's where I just keep telling it it because it's no longer well will no longer be the owners, the current owners. So you know, the future homeowners are gonna be looking, they wanna see and envision their stuff in the house to make it their home, not yours. And I like to use a lot of visual play because when I'm saying, Well, where are you going next? Talk to me about that property. Close your eyes and envision what it does. Open the door and tell me. And that's also helps me when I'm working with other buyers to say, oh, you're describing a property that I have coming. And last year, I wound up being able to do just that. I had a family who had described and we worked for 11 months because it was still a little tough and just trying to beat out other offers. And they described the house that actually I sold to them that never went to market. One of my previous customers had called me and said, hey, I need to sell. I got to move back to Nebraska. What can you do for me? And I'm like, I'm eating dinner with the family. Give me about 45 minutes. I'll give you a buzz. And when it, I spoke with him, I said, hey, you have two options. We can take it to market. It's going to be great, right? This is exactly what everyone wants. A four, three corner property with a pool. Yes fairly new, year and a half old, yeah, this will go. You're going to have a lot of people trampling through your house. Or I have a family who's been looking for the last 10 months for exactly this. And it was that little detail when the father of the buyer, because it was merged family, right, multi-generation, when he had described not just the house, the pool, they went so deep, and I like to go six deep, and I said, well, tell me, well, do you want a pool? What does the pool look like, right? Just when we ask ourselves, what's our why? You got to keep going deep. He said, I don't know if I'll ever be able to get it, but I want one of those that have the little shallow side where I can be on a recliner. I said, a sun deck is or a bubble deck, whatever. He goes, yeah. Lo and behold, when my previous customer installed the pool, he had one of those. So when I called up the prospective buyers, I was like, listen, I got a house for you. I'll be away for a few days. When I come back, you can get in. That was probably one of the few homes I did not do professional photography because it sold off market. But every other home always goes professional photography, even when during COVID, right? No one was putting a sign in the yard. They were using their cell phones. 
I still, every listing, professional photographer, because it had nothing to do with the market. It had everything to do with my brand mm. and the level of service. Well, Elena, I'm assuming you're doing really well. And if not, you're going to be doing really well. I, I'm just very impressed with maybe it's the Wall Street background. Maybe it's the New Yorker in you. But I think you've got a very interesting perspective on how to share your information with the seller. It's, I think it's brilliant. I think that's uh, it's it's great that you're connecting the dots, too, between a potential buyer who's looking for something and then somebody says hey i've got this home and good for you congratulations on that I, and just i started over in the bel rico area when i came down to florida i lived in riverview and started with century 21 over there so a lot of changes over there in the last 25 years or so you know? yeah well done yeah i'm down here 19 years and riverview still had cows past uh boyette <laughs> yeah. and uh, forget it behind my house there was cows oh. and in 20 16 it's now a monstrosity community known as la colina yeah. but uh yeah good times oh, good. hey sherry in case um you have to run to a different meeting i'm not i'm not saying you do but i want to make sure you uh we're going to get together tomorrow night at your your event so why don't you share a little bit about that and then also your perspective on photography video etc go ahead sherry um hey guys sherry mandel exp of course and of um investment title and I'll stick with the topic of um of like the virtual staging and pictures and over the years just kind of going through homes or going in and doing signings for sellers it almost kind of amazes me how some of the homes that are on the lower price point actually sell with all what I like to call all the junk in there right I can't even imagine bringing someone through my parents home and you know, my dad, my, my dad is just, you know, one seven up away from the fridge that's still sitting on the counter. And I'm like, why? Well, we had um, a realtor that I did some work for title wise. She has this house on the market and the guy will not take the Christmas tree down. He still believes in Christmas in July. And um, it's turning a lot of our prospective buyers off because they're saying, well, if he has this up, what else is he hiding? Um, and of course, we find that a more minimalist, almost near naked house to see the bones that we're working with is helpful. Um, and having that occasional sectional or the occasional um, love seat and couch in there is really almost what people want to see. So I had this listing in Tampa, and I'll tell you, it's probably the smallest like it's only like 938 square feet, but it was supposed to be a three bedroom, two bath and actually doing a virtual stager. He had a hard time putting furniture in there virtually. So one can only imagine what could happen regularly. So, um, but now that I see it um, when it's rented out because we couldn't get it sold, it was too high of a price point anyway. But now if we could scroll in there and take pictures of it, we know it could sell faster. Um, and so being able to go in, I like what the other girl said. I was saying it's, you know, you don't refer to it as a home. It's a house, you know, um, we're not selling the people's, you know, pictures of the pandas and all that. We're selling the bare bones to see what people can do with it. And, um, and, that, and that's so important. It's hard, especially with the people um, that you're dealing with, with a probate situation, mm -hmm. but that's what we're here for, right? We're here to be their ear and their salesperson at the same time. So, um, you know, that's a, it's always helpful keeping your eye on the crowd. Um, in case you don't have it on your calendar, tomorrow evening um, investment title is having a little meet and greet get together with um, investment title. We have um, outside of our beautiful Sean, uh, McMenimum, our wonderful uh, mortgage guy here. We have another mortgage person that we're doing some collaboration with over there um, for our Hispanic community and the, what they call the Latin girls in real estate. Um, I always like to say, hey, come on, EXP. We never know who, what other realtor we might find at that event that hates their current broker. Let's bring them on. Let's do it. Sherry, what time does uh, it start? I'll put the notes in the comments here for you as to where it's going to be. And um, come on, come join us for- Sherry, some... what time does it start? It starts at 5.30. Okay. And it is going to be at um, 
It's a place called Santos in Tampa, in Ebor, and I'll send put the details here in the comments. Okay, sure. Thank you. Look, at, if anybody wants to go, I'm going to leave from the office. We can carpool. So let's leave about uh, five o'clock, be at the office if you like, and we can go together. Okay. Thank you, Sherry. Deanna, I don't mean to pick on you, but you are I don't recognize you. I'm glad you're here. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Tell us um, about yourself and share your two cents, please. So uh, I'll actually start by uh, letting you know that uh, Sue Tai had, a, had told me about this and invited me here. Wonderful. Um, just, had a, just had a closing with her on Friday. Sure. Um, so I am a real estate agent for the past 10 years, and I'm, I'm with a different broker right now, sure. not EXP. No I could see everybody saying EXP. It's okay. Um, this is an open forum for everybody, and uh, we're thrilled you're here. Go ahead. Thank you. And as far as photography, I actually do hire a photographer who I think is absolutely wonderful. Um, and when I talk to my sellers, I actually take my time and go around the house with them and tell them to think minimalistically. Um, and we go room by room, um, walk them around and tell them you know, I, I am hiring the photographer. I don't ask you to pay for it um, because this is a representation of me and who I am. So I need to get your house ready. And everything I say, I say with love because I will walk in and I had a client um, who had huskies and her house smelled like dog. Mm. So I had to I had to say that. <laughs> so she said, okay, give me a, a few weeks to get it out, to clean it up. And um, that's usually what happens is they take their time and three to four weeks later, they, they're like, okay, come back, smell my house. And I'm like, you did a great job. So uh, that's, and a lot of, a lot of my listings are people that I know. Uh, they're from my own sphere. So it's an, to me, uh, I have an easier time saying it to somebody I know than a perfect stranger uh, because people um, who do know me know that I'm not, I'm, I don't mean to come across as crass or harsh or, you know, mean, nasty. Um, they, they know me. I, I I tell it like it is. And if you want a higher dollar, that's what you need to do. Uh, so that's kind of what I say. I agree. You know, I um, you know, I know it's not easy to have some of those conversations, but look at they're hiring us to help them sell their home and we need their help to sell their home, right? And keep it in order and keep it clean. And you know, no, you know, you never know when someone's got gonna want to see the property. You always have to keep it show ready, you know. Um, and I'm sure we've all dealt with people that their home is never show ready and it just makes it difficult, you know, to, you know, you're trying your best. They, we, we need their help. So, um, Deanna, who are you, where are you located? So I, um, actually in, in the Newport Ritchie Trinity area right. and, and real quick, if, if I have like th 30 seconds left, Go ahead, sure. um, just a quick story about cows. We had a lot of cows here. I drove my daughter to school and she's like, mom, look at cow. And I'm like, yeah, I know there's a lot of cows. She goes, no, mom, look, a cow, cow, cow. And it was walking outside of the fence in the direction of her school. We were almost pulled up to her school. So I had to tell the principal, there's going to be a cow coming to the school any minute now. <laughs> you can, might want to call somebody. We, so, can tell, we can tell by the photo behind you. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's like you're wearing the oh, marks. yeah yeah conversation piece <laughs> very nice well thank you for joining yeah. us today yeah thank you thank you for having me so, miss suzanne cook you were in arizona for years as a realtor what do you, do you see any difference here with um with what you've noticed in your very short time so far here in florida Real not estate? really oh, no. okay go ahead yeah not really i mean it's it's the same way everywhere and mm -hmm. um same thing. Uh, the main thing is, and John, do you know this? Uh, when we went into a, a listing not too long ago, mm -hmm. clean off the front of the refrigerator yeah. and the top of it. <laughs> Make sure there's no chips on top and stuff. Yeah. 
it's kind of a pet peeve, but it's it's pretty much basically the same thing. And um, out in Arizona, Karen, I had somebody that came in also. That way it took that off of me. Right. Uh, so it, it makes your relationship with the owner a lot easier. So Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. No, I, I had some photos done on Friday. I listed it Friday, had photos done Friday because they were going out of town for three weeks. I wanted to get it done. Um, and I knew it was going to be in good shape, you know, um, when I went over. But I'm moving the dog bed around, you know, or the different things around the house. And, of course, I put it in one spot where he got a photo of the hallway. I'm thinking, oh, man, I never would have thought. So move stuff way out of the way. Put it in a closet or, or, or an area that they're not going to uh, take the photo and see it. Um, and Miss Henning, why don't you unmute and tell us about yourself and share your two cents, please. Melissa. Hey, guys. Um, I'm Melissa. I'm in Tallahassee. Um, there's a little group of us up here. And um, I'm not sure if anyone's already said this. I've been coming in and out dealing with my son and stuff. But um, toilet seats being down is my huge pet peeve. And I hate when I see photos that toilet seats are up. I just think it looks poorly on the agent, looks poorly on the cell. It's just put the toilet seats down, um, that kind of thing. Same thing with like dog beds and just, you know, I try to tell the sellers you can live one way, but your photos are going to look a different way. Mm -hmm. Showings, you can have the stuff on the countertops. Photos, they're going to be off the countertops. Right. Us, a buyer will look at a salt and pepper shaker and miss the granite countertops. Right. So trying to just let them really get into the eyes of the buyer, like you guys said, take yourself out of it, taking them, you know, not making it personal, um, same kind of thing. I agree with everything that's been said. And I think it's, these are great, even more tips to think about too. The chips on top of the fridge, one of those things you miss and then you see it in the photo and you're like, oh, how did I miss that? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I agree with you. And you know what, um, what the heck was I going to say? You know, just little things. Um, and I think as we go through our MLS listings today, just keep an eye on the photos and see what you would have done differently, you know? I think minimalizing everything is key. Um, and then you can always put the knives in the, this lady had two Keurigs, 27 knives, a toast, a lot of stuff. Move it into a different room, take the photo and then put it back. So I, I agree with most. Thank you for sharing that. Mr. Escobar, you're next, sir. What would you like to share? Everyone's covered everything and more than I would ever think of. You know what I was thinking too, Ed? And um, you know, another reason we get for uh, professional photography done is how many times do you want to go to a listing presentation and say, hey, here's what here's what my photos are going to look like, you know, and at different price points? Because, you know, you, when you see some of these listings where the photos are just so poor, even in the higher end homes, you're going, why wouldn't this agent, you know, spend the extra couple hundred bucks to get great photos done? It's a reflection on them. And I think it could be a help to us to get those listings by showing what we are doing for our seller. Um, Johnny Pulsefield in Pine Island there. Why don't you chime in? Uh, I think everything that's been said has been really good. The one thing I would mention is the aerials. Uh, we haven't brought up uh, drone shots, aerials. I think those are really important. I know when I look at listings, I like to look at in and around the house and the neighborhood. And of course, that means clutter out in the yard and, uh, you know, You've got all sorts of clutter out there. And it's very important to get the owners to get that cleaned up. Agreed. Yeah, we hit, we listed a home over the weekend and it's not far from the water. So the, those drone shots are very valuable showing, uh, you know, how close they are to the water. Go ahead, Elena. That just reminded me. Um, shameless plug for my photographer, uh, Team HDM Photos. One of their packages not only includes the drone and the like the dollhouse walkthrough it used to be called Matterport but other mm -hmm. uh, different ones but she also includes a floor plan oh, which nice. really helps buyers because a lot of times we do right try to put the photos you're going to put the you know the the big ticket items the kitchen the bathrooms whatever wows people in the first couple of photos but that kind of jumbles buyers try to figure out well, where is this room in relation to this room and when she told me that's just one of her standards in the package I was like done thank you so yeah 
Yeah, and does it have the room sizes on it as well? It does, and it, but it does say, right, approximate, et cetera, sure. but it's, it really helps people see how the flow of the house is. Because yeah, some I, people are like, oh, I want split floor plan, and split means different things, apparently, to different people. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. You know, you when you take the photos in a certain order in the home, you really don't know where they're located in the home. That's a very, very good point. I try to get the photos. I want to do it in order of as if you're walking through the house. You know, don't go from kitchen to pool to lanai to bedroom. To, you know, it does that doesn't make it. Uh, I do the same thing. And I always wonder if people, because I look at pictures all the time, like we all do in, I'm like, why did you put the pictures that they're either bad pictures or they make no sense whatsoever. I, I do the same thing too. And I always tell my photographer, you know, people want to see like the beginning of the community because they go, no one's going to buy the nicest house in the area they don't like. So I try and take a couple of pictures, have them pay, take pictures of when they first drive into the community, the gate or whatever, especially if it's nice. And then the home itself, people want to get a sense because they have no vision. Let's face it. Most buyers don't understand. So the, that hallway to get to where you're going, sometimes I'll throw those in just to give people logistics on the house. But Elena, that's a great deal. Cause I, I do get questions about, um, <clears throat> the floor plan. And there are people out there that, you know, charge for extra. Just curious, Elena, what, what, what are the, what is your photographer charging for that type of package that has the drone and the, um, the floor plan? So uh, recently I did a, just about 2000 square foot home, not once, twice, I actually had same footprint in two locations in the community. One already sold, one's pending uh, for 2000 square foot home with not only video walkthrough tour, so she, they also do reels, ready to make the mm. social media stuff, which I think is huge. Mm. It was just about 500, like 475. It The lowest I've had was 425, and that was for like under, I think, 1,600 square feet. I always budget right around that 500 mark for mm. the typical 2,000 square foot home. And what I outside of the floor plan, the drone, the dollhouse walkthrough, the video tours branded and unbranded, branded website. They actually, and I don't know many other photographers that do, they help promote your listings. Mm -hmm. Wow. That they'll share it out there. They'll say, just captured, and they'll do reels. And if you say, hey, uh, can you do a vertical reel for me? Because we know everyone's looking like this, not like this. Right. I I found them in January and they quickly became my first choice. My other photographer was fantastic, but he started getting a little complacent when I had to continuously remind him, turn the volume down, et cetera, and was also starting to get a little more expensive. And I get things go up in value, things, you know, money's tough, inflation, all that stuff. But if I'm paying more, I should, I still feel there should be a level of service. And for five years, I shouldn't have to remind you to turn the volume down on the video tour. Got it. <laughs> that, you know, my little pet peeve. Tell me, I will only do something wrong one time, right? Tell me once, that's it, understood, move forward. It's saved. <laughs> Thanks, Elena. And um, Carrie, I know you asked for um, that information and Elena did put it in the chat who the photographer is. Carrie, do you want to uh, share anything else? Uh, one second. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm Carrie Muenos. I'm under uh, Terry's downline. I'm here in the Tampa Bay area, uh, North Tampa, Lutz, Land O'Lakes, Odessa, Carrollwood. Um, I've been in real estate now four years, and um, I I agree wholeheartedly with all that you guys are saying regarding uh, listing and how to get them up on the market. Um, one of my pet peeves is just coming across pictures where you know a, an agent didn't convince buyers of how important it was to just tidy up your home. You know, beds unmade. I, I've actually taken comforters to my listings, you know, for my photographer to have clean shots. Um, 
I think that dotting I's and crossing T's across the board, um, just looking at my seller's home as if it were my own home that I wanted to get the best value for them out of it, as, as if it was, I was selling my own home and wanting to get the best price I could. And I also agree with what Jim was saying. Um, if there's a home that, you know, it, the, the sellers are putting it up as cash only, um, it, it still becomes, it, it's still very important to represent that home in the best light possible, even if, even if there are things wrong with it. Like for instance, right now I have a listing, but it came out of probate and um, there's, there's nothing in it. It's completely vacant. The house, in my opinion, has great bones. Um, it needs a new roof. It, we've had this roof discussion before in a previous collaboration. Um, it, it, it was under a, I'm sorry, my dog needs to go out. One second. Okay. It's all home that Jeopardy used. Yeah. <laughs> Say again. Go ahead, Gary. <laughs> I was just saying that, um, so this, this listing came out of probate and the um the brother and sister unfortunately don't agree on cash conventional so we we started out as cash only my opinion and i shared it with both of them only one of them is on board that this home screams of conventional we just have to figure out how to how to get the roof involved but i have not been able to convince the sister to pull the you know to have the roof done either at closing or have it done prior to adding conventional into the terms. So I'm, we're kind of at a, at a gridlock right now. Um, in fact, we're under contract with a cash buyer who has said that they, um, that they sent the release in cancellation and I don't have it. Mm. So anyway, um, in, in that case, you know, the, the home is, the home is vacant. It's, um, it, it photographed very well. And I agree with, with Jim. I mean, you don't want your photographer to go in and, and take pictures and make it look like something that it's not. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you, you know, it's, it's a fine line. You want to have the best pictures you can um, to show off the value of the home. Right. Well, mm -hmm. I'm sure, Carrie, you're aware of some virtual staging, too, that's very helpful for, for vacant homes, um, and it's very inexpensive to do. And I'm not saying doing the whole house. Do one bedroom, do one living room, 28 yeah. bucks. And if, I, yeah. and if I can convince the sellers to to do conventional, I, I, it's definitely the way to go. I, this 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 home is in my neighborhood, you know, and there's there's so much value in, the, in our neighborhood alone. Um, I, I've got eight, 12 buyers who would put in an offer yesterday if we were offering conventional. Um, it's just this roof thing has got my seller so scared, my one seller so scared, um, and she doesn't want to yeah. fork the money out. Carrie, you should you should have a conversation with Ed Escobar. I bet you he, he could come up with a few lines for your sellers that would really help you move the needle here. You know, and I'm just okay. thinking of Curbio, for example, is another they could put the roof on and get paid at closing. That's just another way to do it. Um, I mean, I think I love Ed. I love your two cents here. Basically, saying you're you're trying to tell me if a qualified buyer came with a conventional loan, you wouldn't sell it to them. Of course they yeah. would. Why? Go ahead, Ed. Well, you know, would you be offended? I love that word. Mm -hmm. Would you be offended if a conventional buyer came to buy your home? That's such a subtle close. Mm -hmm. You know, and most people say, well, no. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that's what I would use. And, um, you know, I use a, a number one roofing. And they'll put the roof on and take the proceeds out of closing. I found that to be a big help. Sure it is. Because because what they're looking at it right up front, the money's coming out sixteen or eighteen thousand. They're not going to budge on that. 
And but, how does the insurance work on that, Ed? Um, the, right now, because the the roof is zero to one year life left, um, we we can't get it. I can't get an insurance quote. Even that's why you got it. That's why you have to get the roof put on prior to closing, and you have to um, like I've sold a couple of houses like that mm -hmm. where I had a number one roofing come in, and I pray to God every time it's going to close because. They're taking the funds out at closing for the roof. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that way they can get insured, you know, after the closing, you know, or even uh, uh, before, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, if someone's stuck on cash, you know, you ought to tell them too, you know, the chances of you getting the most money for your home in direct proportion to the number of people that see it. Yeah. I've gone and I don't know the already. exact statistics on it. I don't know the exact statistics on it, but I would think that, the percentage of people coming in with cash uh, in relation to the number of people coming in with conventional. Yeah. Elena is just very made small. that message in the ch chat. That's a brilliant, and that's an easy way to figure that out, Carrie, and I can help you do that in MLS. See how many closings in the last 60, 90 days in that area yeah. of cash versus conventional, you know? Yeah. I just, I, I, I don't get the thought process of them saying, I don't want conventional. Is that because of the roof? All right, then take the next step to get the roof put on, get them paid at closing. It'll probably right. bring them more money. Um, Carrie, right. The, the I've had this conversation the many roof. times, and the, the brother has already gone out and gotten three quotes for uh, new roofs, but the, the sister is absolutely against conventional. Chris, and go ahead. I, I can't Carrie, understand. I, what I would you. say to the sister that you know the it's an insurance issue, and whether it's a cash buyer, there's no cash buyer that's going to spend. I don't know what your listing price is, the three four hundred thousand dollars, whatever it is, or even more, and not insure their home at closing for other mm -hmm. losses. So there, there, yeah, there, there's no way it, it's an insurance issue. So whether it's a, a cash or conventional buyer, it's a, it, it's a, still the same issue. So fix the issue, which is the roof. It's an right. insurance issue. Well, Get it done. I, Ed said, I, if you can find somebody that is willing to do the uh, the roof prior to close and then pay after closing, that's huge. I mean, they can put a lien on it, but that's probably why they'll do it. But I, I would sell her on that and let her know that the issue is not going to go away with a cash buyer. Right. Right. Like Chris. And Ed, you said that was a number one roofing? Number one roofing. Yeah, I've used them before. They're good. Yeah, okay. they're really good. But also, yeah. let, me say this, let me say this to you, you know, reverse it. Let's, pay, let's put the shoe on the other foot and say you're the buyer. Right. Would you buy a home that you can't insure? Yeah, that's a good one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I would do. Hey, I got Carrie Ann. So can, one of the things you could, you could maybe throw out, I don't know if you have about conventional lending, is that conventional lending offers a renovation loan. Right. So if they want to take a conventional loan, it can be switched to what's called, you know, renovation or even, I don't know what your sales price is, 203K for FHA, but conventional and also mortgages, it doesn't matter what type of mortgage it is. We, you know, FHA does look at repairs, conventional, not so much. So it's not, it's not the roof, it's the insurance, just, you know, just Correct. like Chris said, it's all, it's all about insurance, but in conventional Correct. lending, there is, you know, a renovation loan available. Do you know, is, is, is there numbers for that? Like, is it a 203K like FHA or what is it called exactly? FHA is 203K. Right. Fannie Mae is, is a home renovation program. So it's, 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 they're all, you know, like conventional, it's listed as conventional. It's no okay. different. Underwriting is exactly the same. There's no, okay. all it is, is it allows the buyer to include in the transaction, the roof, you know, the cost uh -huh. of the roof. So if your mortgage is going to yeah. be 300,000 and the roof's 20,000, the mortgage is 320,000 after closing. Right the proceeds get distributed to whoever's doing the roof via the title company, just like a construction loan, basically. Right. From what I understand from talking to um, a lender, the um, those renovation loans actually go under a second 
underwriting process. Is no. that the same? Is that the same for conventional? No, it's 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 that's what I'm saying. It's exactly the same underwriting process, other than the you are you, not you now have this escrow account and the you know the the whoever's doing the roof has to be approved. I mean, as long as they have a license, you know, uh -huh. and, they're, and they're in good standing, hey, Sean, it's not can a I problem. Real quick, Carrie, write, write Sean's number down there. You see it on the screen. And give him a call after the after this uh, the Zoom. Okay, so. You know, yeah. There's some options there. I think. That, you have any questions? Yeah. yeah and I think the best thing you can do is, you know, use some of the advice that Ed gave, put an issue on the other foot, and then um, yeah. the the best solution to this is to get the roof on now, get paid at closing, open it up to conventional. Simple. Yeah. It's called I, home I style just... renovation. Is the name of is the true name? Home style renovation is the Fannie Mae product. Home style renovation. Okay. Yep. And I just sold the home. I just sold a home three doors down from this one uh, three weeks ago. So, you know, I've got tons of buyers conventional off of that one as well. Um, people are just chomping at the bit to get in this neighborhood uh, con on conventional. Um, FHA too, of course, but I know I can't convince them on that one. But, um, you know, they're willing to convert to conventional to get in here. I just, she's, She's just put her foot down. I tell them to write up an offer. <laughs> when I present an offer to a seller, it's got yeah. box marked conventional. I'll even say no to that. I, I, just, yeah. I don't know. Anyways, that's what I'd suggest doing. Carrie, great, great questions and great points. So thank you very much. Um, thank you. you. Rachel, you want to unmute real quick and share your input on, because you're the residential gal of the Ong team. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, hi everyone. Um, as uh, you guys know, we always partner up. Me and Jim always. I will do the pre-listing presentation. I'll bring him in. But I think I just want to chime in for um, another thing that you know you are a listing broker uh, agent. Try not to wear too many hats. So you don't want it to appear that you are the photographer, you are the stager, you're the designer, you are the one who can pack. And so bring some expertise. And so when you bring on your team, your best resource, having them to give the idea um, out, you make the list um, and then you follow through and getting professional photography done. So that will be my best choice, nice and clean going forward. Um, and also, I just don't understand how uh, a lot of MLS listings has over hundreds of photos. Um, like who has the time and for a house to go through even with 3D or a floor plan, they're just, it takes about, less than 25 pictures to go through from walking in the neighborhood or walking out of the back door. So I just didn't really understand why other people take that many pictures. They could be redundant and people get uh, lost and get bored of going through the um, pictures. So that was just, and also, um, you know, when we thinking about listing, providing client services, uh, we always think about a gift towards the end and why not offer them saying we take on the listing, I will provide, I'll pay for the stager or at least preview um, giving the ideas because you kind of know who you're working with. And I always offer that. I said, you know, this will be my gift to you. And that's a great write off as well. Yeah, well done. Good point about all those things. So thank you, Rachel. Terry, you're, um, go ahead, Jimmy. Just, just one last thing. You guys can hear me, right? Yep. Yeah, um, you know, the, the exterior is as important as the interior. So if you have a chance to like, you know, check out, we, we call it scouting the area. Uh, what's, what, what time of the day the house looks best? So you schedule the photographer then. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you say, no, I want a noon, you know, because he's trying to squeeze you in his time. It's like, no, no, I'm not available then. Like, please come at what, sunset or early in the morning and insist on it. Wow. Uh, that's like a, a technical thing. Uh, some people might not know or recognize it. But if you, um, you, you see this kind of uh, photography on really high end homes, 
like million dollar homes. You know, they take picture when the sun's setting, the sun's rising. It really, really does the trick. Great, yeah. great, great but, point. But you know, it depends on your yeah, it depends on your your the budget of the house and all that stuff. So. Sure. Thank you, Jim. Terry, yeah. go ahead. Why don't you share your two cents? Good morning, everybody. Yeah, you know, I have to piggyback Jim and, and Rachel to hire a professional. You don't want to be accused of being a potted plant salesman. Uh, it's funny how many videos that are done by real estate agents will stop the video on something like that. You're you're trying to sell the house, obviously. Um, and don't hesitate to hire professionals just because you've got a hundred thousand dollar listing because if you do it right that's going to help you to get other listings so that's just a bad move in general um make sure that your clients are seeing the house that you're showing them and not the decor uh one example of that is i i took somebody to this lady's house and she was a Russian lady, and she had such a gorgeous home. I mean, the, the the decoration in the home was just amazing. And I'm just watching my client, which is very important to do, by the way. Watch your client. And she's looking at all this stuff, and she goes, man, this house is gorgeous. I'm loving this home. No, you're not loving the home. You're loving the decor. And I show her another house, which is the exact same builders, exact same floor plan. And she even liked the neighborhood better. But she goes, I, I think I really want to get that other one. I said, OK, so I went and I got the, the blueprints of both homes. I said, this is the home with the decor. This is the home that you like in the better area, but you prefer this house. I said, you have to understand all of that decor is going to be gone when you buy the home. So it was, it was, it, she understood right away and they ended up getting the other house. Um, make sure your home is listed correctly. Fair condition, good condition, excellent condition. You don't wanna have buyers going to look at your house and being disappointed. That's the last thing you want. You want them, if they're gonna go look at the house, they need to know and be prepared for what they're going into. And if you say the house is excellent and it's a poor condition home, that's really going to turn them away right away. Um, and the hardest thing to breach is when somebody has a shrine in their home to a loved one. That's a very delicate conversation, but it's a conversation that absolutely needs to happen. So. You just have to be very delicate about how you approach something like that because they are extremely emotional about things like shrines um, and family pictures too. So uh, I've heard some incredible points today. It is such an honor to be in business with such a caliber of business owners. Uh, and I'm, I appreciate all of you very much. Terry, thank you for your two cents. So, Sean, let's uh, end with you and uh, what's going on with the mortgages. Yeah, so we're uh, every week. It seems like I'm I'm up, I'm down. It's, it's the rates are up, they're down. You're like so rock. We're, you know, we're <laughs> right right now it's uh, right around seven percent. You know, it's that's the number. Sorry, you know, you know, government loans, FHA, VA. They're in the mid sixes, you know, they're always going to be, I get this question all the time. Why are, why are VA and FHA loans, you know, interest rates cheaper? Well, it's because they cost more, you know, they have higher mortgage insurance, they have upfront mortgage insurance. So yeah, we're right around 7%. And, you know, it's, it's going to be like this because, because news this week is going to be a big week. The Fed's going to meet, we're going to see what they say. Every time they open their mouth and say something stupid, the which is most of the time, the the rates get beat up. So we're we're on a roller coaster. I, I think, of course, I said this three months ago. I thought we were headed to lower rates, but with inflation, that's the whole thing. It's inflation. It's inflation. It's good news in the economy. Every time there's good news in the economy, it, it screws up the rates. Okay, we got. 
unemployment, you know, employment's good, GDP is good, rates don't like that. They, rates that they don't want a hot economy. So right now we're kind of fighting that. But you know, there's still the options of doing buy downs. There's still the options. Now, where I'm at, you know, on the broker end now is where I'm at. I have so much, so many pricing options that I can offer buyers right now. You know, you can pay points. You can do things differently than than on the retail side. I was really restricted. So there's a lot of flexibility. So you can always refinance later. You know, it's just that if we can get some more inventory, I know that's the biggest thing right now is people are sitting in their house with threes and twos and they don't want to sell. But, you know, it there's there's a, a lot of programs out there that I can offer right now. If you have a buyer and needs a solution, let me know. We'll find a solution. I'm, you know, I'm working on one of Rachel's buyers right now to try to find them a solution for a self-employed person because they're tough. You know, it's tough to find the right deal. But I have a bridge loan right now that's amazing. I have you know, some, some self-employment programs that are amazing. So, you know, maybe try and get these buyers off the fence and see what, see what can happen. But, uh, you know, right now sevens are the number. Hey, that's the number. That's what it is, right? <clears throat> it used to be a lot worse. It used to be a lot better. It's going to be yeah. somewhere in the middle. So um, Karen, any final thoughts? No, thanks. This was a great one. Uh, thanks everyone for everyone's input. Well, I think it's great because we got input from everybody, especially from our Elena. I'm so glad you joined us today. And who else? Melissa and Deanna and Carrie. And yeah, Sue and Sue Chai, um, came in. Yeah. Yeah, and if you want a specific to uh, topic, just text John or I, and we'll you know we'll we'll make it happen. I am working on um, getting David Bennett in as a guest, and David's the uh, president of Pro to talk about the uh, NARA lawsuit. So I'll get that in soon. I am recording this. I will put this right back up on Facebook, everybody. Bring your friends. You know, this is an open conversation just for general real estate. It's not a, you know, you know, solicitation for anything else other than that. And we will leave at 5 p.m. tomorrow. Anybody who wants to join us from our branch office, 2323 Curlew Road. Okay, good. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, everyone. Everybody have a great day. Hey, uh, Michelle and Terry and Karen, hang on for a minute, okay? Okay. Have a great week. Thanks for having me. Good to see Bye you. Bye, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Hi, guys. Hey, Michelle. Good morning. If you'd like, Michelle, you want to share that video? Uh, yeah, hold on. I'm trying to go back to it. It's actually on. If you have time. Harry's um, YouTube. So I'll share it from there. You know what? I'm wondering if I should, how, can I stop the recording on this? Yes, you can. Let me stop the recording first.